Fantastic. And now I'd like to invite our next speaker, up, Aiden. Um, yeah, so our research was on in-context learning, uh, specifically for like low-level control on unstable dynamical systems. Uh, so our research question was, can a single transformer that's pre-trained on expert trajectories uh, use in-context learning alone uh, to adapt to like unseen dynamics and system parameters uh, to stabilize a control problem with low-level control? Um, so you may be wondering, like, why transformers for this problem? So transformers are deep learning models that are very adept at understanding sequences and the relationship between sequences and also with uh, their self-attention over tokens, the relationship between tokens in the sequences. Um, so it's able to learn dependencies across long histories, which is great for time series, which is what we have in this case. Uh, and then it's also able to adapt to, con or to like new systems through the context alone with no way updates. So it's able to learn at inference without having to retrain or anything like that. Um, so what is in-context learning? So many of us are familiar with uh, transformer models trained on like text. So at the bottom, we have an example here. Red is to Ruby as blue is to, and then the model would predict sapphire. And if you replace Ruby with strawberry, the model would then predict blueberry. This shows that transformers, depending on the input, will be like the context will be able to change what the model prediction is. In our case, it's a little bit more complicated than this because we are having the model actually learn from the context. So not only are we changing the output, but we're actually influencing the underlying model to make different decisions based off of what is uh, in the context. And again, this requires no weight updates and no post-training or any sort of training uh, at inference. Um, to, to do this, we built off of a lot of existing work. Um, most of the work that we studied was on transformers in control, but not really transformers trained for low-level control. Um, and so that is what we do. We train for low level control. And what is low level control? This is a closed loop example of low level control. So you would have some sort of initial condition. You provide it to the model. The model provides a control action and that influences the system. And then that feedback is given back to the model for it to then create the next control action. And something that is unique to transformers, uh, especially as a model, is that previous control actions are able to impact the next control actions that are made. Typically, when you have the feedback back to the model, it is just the next like state or whatever feedback you get from the system that influences the next action. And we see the standard uh, vector, the state vector for the carpool system, which is the position, velocity, angle from upright, and then the angular velocity. And the carpool system itself, the goal is to stabilize that pendulum uh, completely upright, only having control in the X direction on the cart. So the pendulum is unactuated and there's no control that can be made directly to the pendulum. Um, so to do this, we designed a two-stage controller. It, uh, it goes from energy-based swing up and then switches to LQR once it gets close to upright. So the energy-based swing up will inject energy into the cart to swing the pendulum up to a desired energy. And this desired energy is defined as directly upright. Uh, then we need some sort of controller that can uh, make small correctional control actions to keep it at that equilibrium. And that is where LQR comes in. So LQR is a linear quadratic regulator that is uh, linearized around the equilibrium. It's pretty complicated, but the cost function is here. And then the equation for the control action is U equals minus KX, which is going to be very important for the model to understand that equation. Um, but yeah, LQR just keeps it at the equilibrium and keeps it from falling down once swing up gets it close. And so this is the actual system that we used for our transformer and to generate our training data. Um, as you can see, the cart can move in the X direction. But one thing to notice is that the original state vector had a theta. And instead of theta, we used cosine and sine. And this is because um, the equilibrium is defined as like uh, theta equals zero or after like a couple oscillations, it could be theta equals two pi, theta equals four pi, theta equals six pi, and so on. So for the model to understand what the desired state is without having any confusion between like different desired states, uh, cosine and sine keep 
keep it so that the theta is one and zero, or like the, in the state vector, it's one and zero for the desired state, no matter what the angle actually is. Um, so this is our controller in action. As you see, there's a large swing up value, uh, energy injection, that causes the pendulum to swing up to equilibrium. And then LQR takes over and keeps it there. Uh, and we have a PD term that keeps the car st cart stabilized uh, around x equals zero. Um, so th this is a transformer model, so we need a lot of data. It's a deep learning. Um, so we generated 19 million trajectories. Um, for each state, we calculated the distance from upright so that the model has some sort of value that it knows to drive to zero as it's uh, providing control actions. Um, all trajectories are labeled with a binary mode indicator. And this is just to help the model learn like LQR has small control values and swing up has very large control values, especially that first uh, control value can be orders of magnitude higher than what you would see in LQR. So for the model to understand like, okay, we're in LQR mode, now we need to make small controls, we labeled uh, the training data. And then each data point has state distance label and action. Um, we also added some noise to the LQR region because if you remember, uh, the LQR equation is U equals minus KX and the U is going to be exponentially decaying to zero, which is really hard for the model to learn that function because it's trying to guess the K. It's trying to guess what K is needed to provide a control action that drives us to equilibrium. But if that control action is exponentially decaying to zero, then we're gonna have, e even before it gets to zero, there, there are gonna be control actions on the order of like 10 to the minus eight. And that's just not like learnable for the model. It's not gonna be able to learn a K from really, really small values. So the 0 0.3 uh, perturbation that we add to the data uh, keeps or like keeps the uh, LQR making correctional changes instead of actually driving to zero. So the model is able to learn that K. So our training paradigm is um, given here. So our model is not trained or is not given any explicit understanding of the dynamics, is not given any equations or system parameters. Um, it must infer the entire control policy just from data alone. And our data is here, so a model sequence, like context one, you'll see, and then all the way up to context 50, then the action will be missing and the model has to predict what that action will be and that will be applied to the system. Our loss function is also here. And then one uh, like very important thing to notice is that our model was only trained on 10% of the data set, which is very unique for a deep learning model. Typically you'd need to increase the amount of data, but we actually uh, noticed that the model's performance was very good at 10% and to eliminate overfitting, we just stopped the training there and allowed it to um, like stop at 10% and that was the checkpoint that we used and we were able to get really, really strong results just from 10% of the data. Um, so in context learning in our system specifically, um, and, and especially in closed loop is shown here. So if you look at the context 50, we have our context and then we have up to the 50. And as I said, it, it predicts the control action but that control action is then put into the sequence and that entire sequence is then given back to the model. So not only is it able to learn from that initial context to make that first control action, but that control action, the first one will have a small error because it's able to see the entire context history uh, before that. And then that's provided back to the model, the model makes the next uh, prediction, and then it just keeps going until it's stabilized. And in the, in the one length context history where it's only given the initial condition, it has to try to learn the entire dynamics of the system, because it's a new system that's not seen in training with new uh, parameters, so new cart mass or length of the pole. And it has to try to learn that just from making actions. So that's more of like an action reaction type of situation. And that's not gonna work as well because if the first action has a lot of error, then that will just compound uh, like as, as it goes. And you can see this in the videos. So context one, the model makes like these initial control actions, but is not able to truly understand the dynamics of the system and just, I mean, it goes off screen. The control actions are not good. But if you look at context 50, since it has that rich context, it understands uh, the system dynamics just initially. And then it makes that initial control action and continues until it gets to equilibrium. Um, and so these are the results. These are our control action plots. 
Uh, as you can see in the context 50, you see the given context is given uh, with the black solid line, and that's up to time step 50, and then it starts making predictions after that. The control actions for the swing up, um, which is the portion that's in the given context, are very accurate as well, but a thing to note is that the actual model is not taking control until that black line ends, and then it starts making the control actions. Opposed to context one, where it starts making the control actions right from the beginning, and as you can see, the control actions do not decay to zero, and we watched the video, it did not go to equilibrium. And we suspect that this is because the model is not learning the control actions instead, or it's not learning the dynamics, instead it's making actions and then trying to learn it on the fly and it's just not working. Um, and then here are the uh, state plots. So this is the velocity, uh, the position, the theta, and the theta dot over time. And as you can see, context one, you know, just stumbles around. It doesn't look very good. But then context 50 has these very smooth plots. Um, so that just proves that through in-context learning, we're able to learn uh, new system dynamics and something pretty complex that like a controller would have very difficult, a very difficult time learning on the fly. Um, so our next steps would be try to apply this to a new system to see if we could possibly even learn an entirely new system in context. However, that's probably going to be uh, too optimistic. So we might have to do some uh, post training as well to try to get like good results on a new system. Um, but we're not going to do any weight changes. So we want this model to be general and be applied to any system without having to completely retrain. So just minimal post training and then in context learning being able to stabilize an entirely new system. Thank you. Thank you, Aiden.